Hello guys, uh, here is Ahmed and here is a new video in the optimization course. In this part of the course, we will talk about linear programming and especially simplex math algorithm developed by Dan Dick is known uh, for this algorithm. Uh, he, he came late to, to uh, the class in, at Berkeley and uh, he found two problems on the blackboard. He thought that these problems are homeworks. So he took a little bit of time to do these homeworks, but uh, these homeworks were very famous unsolved problem in statistics, and uh, and he didn't know that it was impossible to solve them, but he did them. After this uh, introduction, uh, let us see uh, what we mean by the simplex uh, algorithm. We, if we want to apply the simplex algorithm, we have to apply it on the standard form for linear program. So we have z is the sum of coefficients times x, and uh, x is the are the decision variables, subject to equality constraints. So we have the sum a j i times x j equal b i, and we have the positivity constraints on the decision variables. We can write this in a matrix form if you want. So we want to minimize this cost function, linear cost function subject to equality constraints and positivity constraints on X. Here we need some definitions. So a feasible solution to the linear programming problem is a vector X, which satisfies the equation of the previous part. A basis matrix is M to M non-singular matrix formed by N columns of the constraint matrix A, not that the rank of A is equal to M. A basic solution to a linear program is the unique vector determined by choosing a basis matrix. A basic solution to a linear program is the unique vector determined by choosing a basis matrix, setting the n minus m variables associated with the columns of A, not in the basis matrix, matrix equal to zero, and solving the resulting square non-singular system of equation for the remaining m variables. A basic feasible solution is a basic solution in which all the variables have non-negative values. A non-degenerate basic feasible solution is basic feasible solution with exactly m positive xi. An optimal solution is a feasible solution which also minimizes z. Danzig proposed a computational scheme. This is the idea. We select a sequence of extreme points, as we saw in the previous video, each one yielding or giving a lower value of z, until finally the, minima, the minimum is obtained. This means a small subset of the set of all possible extreme points is used. What is the procedure? So we take a point A, so we find a, an extreme point, then we test, is this point optimal? If no, we go to a neighboring extreme point, so B, such that Z of B, the cost of B, is less than the cost of A. And then we continue in iterations, finite number of steps, and we will go to the first point. The result of this algorithm find the minimum or no finite minimal solution. So minimum of Z is minus infinity or the last possibility, no feasible solution. So empty constraint set. Theorem one, the objective function Z assumes its minimum at an extreme point of the constraint set. If it assumes its minimum at more than one extreme point, then it takes on the same value at every point on the line segment joining any two optimal extreme 
points. Theorem number two, a vector x is an extreme point of the constraint set if and only if x is a basic feasible solution of the constraints we saw before. So since a basic feasible solution has at most m of n variables positive, an upper bound to the number of basic feasible solution is the number of ways n variables can be selected from a group of n variables, which is n factorial over n minus n factorial and n factorial. But for large problems, it would be impossible to evaluate z at all the extreme points to find the minimum. So before giving the method proposed by Dantzig, it is necessary to know how to go from one basic feasible solution to another, how to identify an optimal basic feasible solution, and how to find one, an optimal one. So a system of m linear equations in n unknown variables, I will show you this in a while. A solution to this system is any set of variables which simultaneously satisfies all equations. The set of all solutions to the system is called its set solution set. The system may have one, many, or no solutions. If no solutions, the equations are said to be inconsistent and their solution set is empty. Now, if we have two systems of equations, these systems of equations are said to be equivalent if they have the same solution sets. The following operations transform a given linear system into an equivalent system. We can multiply any equation by a constant k different from by zero and replace any equation e by the equation e plus k e t, where e t is any other equation of the system. To be clear, let us take this example. So, for example, we have minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 1, x1 plus x2 plus x4 equal to 2. So if we multiply the first equation by minus 1 and add to it the second equation, this will get, we will give minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 1, 2x1 plus minus x3 plus x4 equal to 1. So if we put x1 equal x3 equal to 0, we will get x2 equal 1 and x4 equal to 2. This is a solution of both systems. Any solution of one system is a solution of the other one. Pivoting, so a pivot operation consists of m elementary operations which replace a linear system by an equivalent system in which a specified variable has a coefficient of unity in one equation and zero elsewhere. The, the steps are as follows. Select a term ARS XS in a row in row R and column S with ARS different from zero. This is called pivot term. We replace the Rth equation by Rth equation multiplied by this term, one over ARS. For each I 1 until m except i equal r, we replace the ith equation ei by ei minus ais over ars times er. I, this means by the sum of ei and the, and the replaced rth equation multiplied by minus ais. If it is not clear, let us take an example. So consider this example, we have three equations, 2x1 plus 3x2 minus 4x3 plus x4 equal to 1 and so on. We want to transform this system to an equivalent system in which x1 is eliminated from all, but we keep it in the first equation.
we will choose 2x1 as a pivot term, which will give us this equation, this system of equations, as you see here. Then the next operation is to eliminate x1 from the second equation. So we get this system. And then we eliminate x1 from the third equation, as you will see. So we, at the end, we will keep x1 in the first equation, and it is eliminated from the other equations. Now we need some notations. Canonical system. Assume that the first m columns of the linear system from basis m, basis matrix B, multiplying each column by B minus the inverse of B yields a, transform, a transformed but equivalent system in which the coefficients of the variables are an identity matrix. Such a system is called canonical system. So this is the canonical system that we will get. We have x1 until xm uh, with unity coefficient. They, are, they form identity matrix. And we have the other coefficients in the other equations. Here, there is an error. We have to write right here uh, b1, bn at the last equation. The variables x1 to xm are associated with the column B are called basic variable solution. Basic variables, they are dependent. If xm plus 1 and xn are all assigned to 0, then we obtain the basic solution x1 equal b1 bar until xm equal bm bar, and xm plus 1 equal xm plus 2 equal xn equal to 0. If the bi's are greater or equal to 0, then this is a basic feasible solution. If one or more bi equal to 0, then in this case, the basic feasible solution is degenerate. We'll see this later. Another way to find the canonical form is by sequence of m-pivot operations. Now, it's time to state the simplex algorithm. There are two phases. Phase 1, find an initial basic feasible solution, or none exist. And phase 2, from this initial basic feasible solution, which is the starting point, we proceed to an optimal solution, or the solution is unbounded. So the objective is treated as an, an another equation. So we have minus z c1 x equal to 0, to, to, to get an augmented system of equations. The problem can now be stated. Find values of x1 until xn greater or equal to 0, satisfying minimum of z. And we have this system of equations. And we add the cost function at the end in red. For optimality, we need theorem number 3. A basic feasible solution is a minimal feasible solution with total cost z bar if all the constants c m plus 1 until c n are non negative. That means if c bar j is greater or equal to 0 from m plus 1 to n, they are called relative cost factors. I will show you the prov proof of this theorem in, in a while. So, since this is the proof, since the variables x m plus 1 and x n are presently 0 and constrained, constrained to be non negative, the only way one of them can change is to, be, is to become positive. So, the first step of the proof, but if c i j greater or equal to 0 then increasing any xj cannot decrease the objective function z since these coefficients are greater or equal to zero since no change in the non-basic variables can cause z to decrease 
the present solution must be optimal. The second point in the proof, the relative cost factors can also tell if there are multiple optima. Let C j greater or equal to zero, let all c bar j greater or equal to zero, and let one of them c k equal to zero for some non-basic variable x k, then if the constraints allow that variable to be made positive, no change in z results, and these are multiple optima. The third point in the proof, it is possible, however, that the variable may not be allowed by the constraints to become positive. This may occur in the case of the generate solution. We will see this later. So the theorem, using the theorem three, we can get this a basic feasible solution is the unique minimum feasible solution if c j strictly greater than zero for all non-basic variables. Let us take an example how to improve a non-optimal basic feasible solution. So we have, for example, this system of equations. We have 5x1 minus 4x2 plus 13x3 minus 2x4 plus x5 equal 20 and so on. And we have these variables. So we assume that we know that x5 and x1 and minus z can be used as basic variables. Then the basic solution will be feasible. So here, the basic feasible solution is x, x5 equal to 5, x1 equal to 3. And if we take x2 equal x3 equal x4 equal to 0, then we get x5 equal to 5, x1 equal to 3, and z equal to 28. But as you see, we have one relative cost factor in the equation is negative. It is minus 24. The optimality test will fail. If x3 is increased from its present value with all other non-basic variables remaining zero, z must decrease because z is related to x3 by this equation. The question is, how large should x3 become? The answer is, the constraints place a limit on the maximum value of x3 that can attain. If x2 equal x4 equal to 0, from the system we can get these two equations, x5 equal 5 minus 3x3, and x1 equal 3 minus 2x3. If x3 increases, then x5 and x1 will decrease, but they cannot be allowed to become negative. If x3 reaches two, 3 over 2, then x1 becomes 0. If x3 reaches 5 over 3, x5 becomes 0. But at the same time, x1 is already negative.
So the largest value x3 can attain is x3 equal 3 over 2. Substituting this value in the equations yields a new basic visible solution with a lower cost. We will get x5 equal 1 over 2, x3 equal 3 over 2, x1 equal x2 equal x4 equal to 0, and z equal minus 8. So we go from 28 now to minus 8. Is this solution optimal? To answer this question, the system must be placed in a feasible canonical form x5, x3, minus z as basic variables. So x3 must replace x1 as basic variable. For this, the simplex method is efficient because there's this replacement can be accomplished by doing one pivot transformation. As you see in this equations, in these equations. Here, x1 had a coefficient of unity and zero elsewhere. So now we wish x3 to have this property. So we apply pivoting on 2x3 of the second equation. x3 becomes basic and x1 becomes non-basic. So as you see, we get these three equations. For the basic feasible solution, x5 equal 1 over 2, x3 equal 3 over 2, and z equal to 8. So this is basic feasible solution. The question now, is this solution optimal? As you see in the last equation, the coefficient c2 bar is negative. We have minus 1. So we cannot get a better solution by increasing x2 while keeping all other non-basic variables at zero. So we have these three equations as you see. Here, notice that we don't have any restriction. Restrict, the first equation restricts x2 to a maximum of 1 over 2 times 7 over 8. This means equal to 4 over 7, which reduces x5 to 0. As before, we obtain a new feasible canonical form by pivoting this time using 7 over 8 x2 in the previous equations. And we will get these new equations, new system of equations. These equations will give us the basic feasible solution x2 equal 4 over 7, x3 equal 12 over 7, and x1 equal x4 equal x5 equal to 0 and z equal minus 60 over 7. And all, as you have noticed, all the relative cost factors for the non-basic variables are positive. This solution is the unique minimal solution of the problem. As you see, the optimum has been reached in two iterations. Now, in general, if we want to improve a non-optimal basic feasible solution, we know 
until now that if at least one CI is negative and all B are strictly positive, it is possible to construct by pivoting another basic feasible solution with lower cost. There is a special case to treat if more than one of CI is less than zero. The, sol the solution is to choose XS to be increased with the one most negative CJ. Now, let XS the variable to become basic, to increase it from zero, as we saw in the example, and holding the other non-basic variables to zero. So we have this system equation. When XS increases, then Z will decrease, but the, this decrease is limited by one of the variables, X1 to XM, could become negative. However, if AIS is less than or equal to zero, then x can be made as large as desired. We will arrive to theorem number five. If in the canonical system for, uh, for some s, all coefficients aIs are non-positive and cs is negative, then a class of feasible solution can be constructed where the set of z values has no lower bound. This is called unboundedness. Now if at least one AI S is positive, so XS cannot be increased indefinitely. Some basic variable will become first zero, then negative. So from the previous slide, XI becomes zero when AIS and when XS attains the, this value. If we have many equations, then X S star is BR ARS. So this XR becomes non basic and it is replaced by XS. So what to do if BI equal to zero? The previous operation can be used to simply locate the pivot term. So we have this CS. The minimum of the ratio occurs for I equal to R, then the pivot term is now in the row R. A theorem, assuming non-degeneracy at each iteration, iteration, the simplex algorithm will terminate in a finite number of iterations. In case of non-degeneracy, we can go from one basic feasible solution to one whose z is at least equal to the previous. The simplex algorithm, the steps of the simplex algorithm, we take a basic feasible solution, if one exists. We test if it is optimal or unbounded. If it is optimal, we terminate. If not, we replace this basic feasible solution with another one and we continue to the step. So the main steps of the simplex algorithm, we start with a standard form of linear programming, and we add artificial variables so that one, have, one has the wanted system. At the end, we add the cost function. And for example, what is the initial feasible solution for this system of equations? I will show you the solution. So the answer is we take z equal x1 e until x1 n equal to 0. So the solution is xn plus 1 equal b1, xn plus m equal bm. And this is the initial basic feasible solution. So we'll use this initial solution and try to drive these artificial variables to 0 by the simplex algorithm. In other, world, in other words, we want to minimize w xn plus 1 until xn plus m, subject to the augmented system of the previous slide. If w equal to 0, so this means all xn plus i equal to 0. If the minimum of w is greater than 0, then no solution to the original system, and all artificial variables cannot be made 0. 
let us take this example so we want to maximize z equal x plus 1 plus 3x2 subject to these constraints minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 1 x1 plus x2 plus x4 equal to 2 and xi are greater or equal to 0 and this x3 and x4 are slack variables that we added here no phase 1 is needed since an initial basic feasible solution is obvious now we rephrase the problem as we want to minimize minus x1 minus 3x2 subject to the constraint here so I would take them the same constraints the initial feasible canonical form is minus x1 plus x2 plus x1 equal x3 equal to 1 x1 plus x2 plus x4 equal to minus x1 minus 3x2 minus z equal to 0 the initial basic feasible solution is x1 equal x2 equal to 0 x3 equal 1 and x4 equal to 2 and z equal to 0 in this case iteration number 1 since c2 is the minimum of c1 and c2 minus 3 x2 becomes basic now to see which variable become non becomes non basic we compute the ratio b1 over a12 for all bi over ai2 for all i such that ai2 greater or equal to 0 this gives this ratio as you see 1 over 1 equal 1 and 2 over 1 equal 2 this term is less between these two equations this means the basic variable is the basic variable with unity coefficient in row 1 of the system leaves the bases here as you see the pivot term is a12x2 to get this system of equation minus x1 plus x2 plus x3 equal to 1 2x1 minus x3 plus x4 equal to 1 minus 4x1 plus 3x3 minus z equal 3 iteration now so the new basic feasible solution is x1 equal x3 equal to 0 and x2 equal x4 equal 1 1 and z equal minus 3 it is reduced here now since ci equal minus 4 c1 equal minus 4 x1 becomes basic the only ratio bi over aij ai1 ha having ai1 positive is that for i equal 2 for the second line so x4 becomes non basic and pivoting and the pivot term is a21 x2 x1 equal to x1 pivoting gives x2 these equations so the basic feasible solution as you will see x1 equal half x2 equal 3 over 2 and x3 equal x4 equal to 0 and z equal minus 5 this is the optimal solution of this problem since all c i j are greater strictly greater from zero thank you for watching this very long video i hope that you have learned many things and bye bye